Hello my fellow handsome, hard-working, good-looking, working people of Western Heights at Geelong. It's very good to have you here listening to me talk about language analysis again. Unlike those useless, lazy characters who won't be listening to this and practically probably never do anything and I don't know why we waste our breath on them. The topic that I'm talking to you about is using language to include, and I include you good, hard-working people, and to exclude those useless, good for nothings who aren't going to bother listening to this. So, the first of these is, when we want our reader to agree with us, we include them in what we're saying. So, rather than saying, I think that this bridge is a good idea, I say, we think that this bridge is an idea, and I include them in my statement. I talk about how it's good for our town, rather than good for the town or my town. I use language that is my dog, I'm afraid. I'm not going to use inclusive language for her. Um, but we bring people into the deal. And when we talk about them as if they agree with us, as if we're all together, then they are more likely to agree with me. So, we are sick of Mayor McBuckle wasting our money. Now, the other thing that we can do is we can use language to exclude our opposition, to push the reader away from people and their position. And this is done by a very, very similar trick. So, those politicians, not our politicians, but those politicians, we're looking at them at a distance, only care about their jobs. So again, it's them, it's those, it's their. It's not us, it's them. They only care about their jobs and their expensive perks. So, if we want somebody to agree with us, we talk about them as being in the same group as us already. This is basically identity and belonging. You belong with me. We think the same thing. They, they don't belong here. They think the wrong thing. So this is a very common technique and you'll see this used a lot in persuasive pieces.